Hey there guys, DMO73 here, bringing you another feature match for the week. Today I am showing off um, a different, kind of more straightforward take on feasting. It's a pure, it's a green blue elf swarm list developed by my friend Eric on Team Ogre. Uh, and it is pretty fun, uh, definitely a lot, great for locals and for goofing around with friends. It is kind of a more casual build, but it's... I thought it would be something that you guys would enjoy kind of seeing uh, as a different take on something to upgrade your structure deck. Uh, and my buddy James is playing, uh, we have a lot of stealth in my locals, and so he's playing an anti-stealth uh, Arla list of his own design. So as you saw there, he um, he won the die roll, so I believe he chooses to go on the play here. Um, but let's just see how this goes. So the whole idea... Um, Anti-Stealth Arla was just designed, it just has all of the kind of answer cards, um, plus with Arla being naturally there, you get bows with four counters, which means they get to be repeatable um, to deal with stealth cards a lot easier. Um, and Feasting Elf Swarm is just that. The whole idea is to load up uh, the board with as many different elves as you can, find a different way to get a massive board pump, whether that be Sprint the Beast Lady or... Um, Feasting herself, and then you just flip over uh, and just kill them straight up, so... It's, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of, you know, kind of just suddenly the game is over kind of deck, uh, and I definitely recommend you guys try it out when the deck list goes live. So we're doing our mulligans here. I think I mulliganed maybe one. Uh, he has three. I have my Energize coin there, and he's going to get us started with Arla. Plays a... Uh, one of the Sacred Reefs off the top because he doesn't want to miss his uh, Ruler's Memoria and then just passes the turn to me. I'm going to play an Apollo just so that I have a second card for the turn and then I'm going to use Energize to do Magic Stone Analysis. Uh, I'm not really expecting him to play um, Wall of Winds um, just because I kind of know James. Um, so Magic Stone Analysis is great for this deck if you're on the draw um, because you essentially turn your Energize into a permanent will source, um, which is really, really great, especially if you have another one drop in your hand. Uh, in this case, I don't, so I actually go ahead and grab my one of basic Water Stone from the deck just so that every stone from here on out is going to be a green source. Uh, and it also triggers to get my 1-1 one, one Elf token. That card you're looking at is actually a card from Kaijudo, the card game I played before uh, Force of Will. Uh, they're some of my favorite cards, and they have a nature element in there too, so I use them as my tokens for fun. Uh, on his turn, he played an Alice's Little Scout, and then just passed. My turn, tap for stone, hit a windstone. Played another Apollo, and then played Torrent Elf, so I get Feastings 1-1 one, one Elf token, and then because I'm torrenting there, Torrent Elf gets me draw a card, so... Also, lots of hand refilling with this deck. Um, pretty consistent draw power, too. Going to James, he taps for a stone, hits a Light Vapors. Then he plays, uh, I can't remember what her name is, but she is the angel that prevents stealth cards uh, from triggering during his turn, as well as Regalia and activate abilities of rulers. Um, so pretty strong. Those Apollos aren't really going to help me much at this point, which I have to be mindful of. Going into my turn... Um, play a form into the world tree which will get me to gain eight life and kind of ship some dead cards out of my hand so up to 48 life feels pretty good play another apollo which gets me another elf and at this point i'm not swinging with torrent elf because i don't want him to be blocking with that alice's little scout i'm drawing a lot of cards and he isn't so if i can keep his hand his hand kind of dead um, then I'm in a much better position here. So I'm considering swinging, but I think that now is the, not a really good time for me to do that. Going into his turn, draws, taps for a stone. Uh, hits a darkness source, which he feels pretty good about. Casts an endless knight on my Torrin Elf. And I try to go, uh, I think about trying to bounce, but I can't because of the, um, the angel there so all of my tokens immediately get killed and his alice's little scout gets killed as well and then he gets to draw a card which is advantageous to him in that situation swings in with uh his angel and i just flash in melfi i decide not to block because i'm over 4,000 life and he might have something from that one white will that gets rid of the melfi which i don't want to have happen tapping for stone here uh, i pay two to play a uh, Prissia and deal some damage to her. They won't kill each other because neither one has 400 defense. 
uh, but they also, or neither one has enough at attack to kill the other. Uh, and then I spend the other four to play Christy, who torrents, I get an elf from Feasting, and then Christy will finish the job on the angel. Going into James here, grabs a bow. My job as the Feasting Elf Swarm deck is just to keep putting pressure on him with creatures. Keep loading up the board more and more and more so that he has to be drawing those board wipes in order to be able to survive. Plays another one of the angels and then makes me discard the rest of my hand with Lapis Darkstorm, which feels pretty bad because I did have a Sprint of the Beast Lady in there, which would have been something to help me push for lethal. Um, tap for stone. Now you're going to see me start trying to be a little bit goofy here. I'm going to bring in uh, Valentina by shifting Prissia. Uh, and then I'm going to start swinging in, getting 500 damage. Um, you know, if she if he blocks with the angel, then I get, it's not going to do anything, and then Christy can kill him. So he might as well just take the damage, and his bow can't kill her. So it's a free 500 damage there. Christy's going to swing. He chooses not to block. And in response to no blocks, I'm going to pump Christy up to being a 1400 with her ability because I control feasting the ruler, putting James down to 21. So I'm already pretty close there, doing pretty good. And then at the end of the turn, I'm going to bounce Melfi back to my hand with the Apollo so I can make use of it next turn and keep, uh, keep her alive. Passing to James. Taps for a stone, hits a uh, Black Moon's Memoria. Now he's going to cast a very interesting card, Charm of the Princess, and he's going to take my Valentina. Now I'm gonna, f I forget about the angel, so I attempt to bring it back to my hand, but then I can't because of the angel, and so he just um, steals my Valentina. The reason why he didn't take the Christie there is pretty simple, is in the fact that I can just crash Valentina into it and take it back, um, so that doesn't really help him much. Uh, and then at the end of the turn, I'm going to flash in um, Melfi so I can ramp again. Tapping for stone. Now I have I swing in with Christy here, and he has to block, um, because if he doesn't, I have more than enough will to be able to just kill him. Um, and so the angel is dead, and now I don't have to worry about it. But, thankfully enough, because of my two Apollos, uh, I get to kind of be a little goofy. I have seven stones, so uh, Little Red comes in with Swiftness, tar uh, Precision, and um, First Strike. And she's a 7-7, seven, seven, so there's seven damage there. Use Apollo to bounce it back to my hand. Swing in for another seven, putting James down to seven. Uh, cracking the Apollo, putting it back in my hand. Uh, and then replaying Little Red and swinging it in for another seven. That was actually something that we used to do with uh, Necrolands back in the day with Lancelot. Um, so it's kind of cool to get to do that in a green deck. But here we go, moving on to game two. So I didn't end up winning game one with the Elf Swarm, um, but I still pushed through. Hopefully I can show you guys a little bit more of what it looks like when a ton of elves just swing in out of nowhere. James did choose to take the draw again, which is a little bit interesting. Especially since he knows I have Magic Stone Analysis. Usually against an opponent where I know Magic Stone Analysis is part of their deck, I'm gonna probably take the draw um, based on the matchup, based on what I'm running, just so that they can't get ahead of me in stones, technically. Unfortunately, even after his mulligan of five cards, James did not hit a Regalia, so his Ruler's Memoria will come in tapped. Um, I'm thinking about what to do, and I decide to pass the turn as well. Covers, before tapping for stone, uh, James is going to go ahead and play Percival, hopefully digging five cards deep to find a regalia. He does, he finds a bow, which is nice. So now he gets that with four counters, and he can tap to um, get a stone without worrying about hitting another ruler's memoria, which he had on top, so good for him. Uh, at the end of the turn, I'm going to flash in Melfi using my Energize. It's the same kind of thing. I'm turning Energize into a repeatable will source. Um, if you can make use of that, it usually works out to your benefit. I'm going to play Tama. And then I'm going to play a Sacred Elf and trigger to get a Elf token. 1-1 one, one Elf token. 
I'm gonna pass the turn. You see there he has that Endless Knight in his hand, uh, which is kind of unfortunate for me with the situation I'm in. So he just decide he's deciding whether to cast it now or later, um, which makes a lot of sense. He just passes the turn and I flash in a Melfi using my two uh, elves, and then before I recover uh, in the draw, he's going to go ahead and um, use Endless Knight on my board, and as a joke, I'm just going to use uh, Tama to kill his Percival, even though they're both going to die. So I do lose a lot there. Uh, I lose the Melfi, the Tama, and the Elf token, but I still keep a uh, Sacred Elf in one Melfi because the minus two, minus two isn't enough. And I can't put any more Elf tokens on the board this turn, but that does feel like it wasn't necessarily the best call um, because I still have a big set of creatures on the board. Uh, I still get to work on establishing a board at this point. Um, and he just kind of wasted a, a big kind of nuke spell that he could have used later when a lot more elves were on the board. So he did slow me down a little bit, but I'm still significantly ahead of him in terms of ramp, uh, and I'm going to keep getting there um, the further this game goes on. Spending two to play a Red Riding Hood, which will trigger feasting. The elf will come in and then immediately get killed by the minus two, minus two on the board for the turn for Endless Night, and then I simply just pass the turn. Taps for another stone, plays another bow, uh, and then he pays four here to play a Lucifer. Now I go to sacrifice the Sacred Elf, uh, but then I kind of catch myself here. Um, I go ahead and just sacrifice the Little Red because that's essentially, again, it's ramping me further ahead. I'm not losing one of my mana dorks, and Little Red turns into a stone for me, um, which is also really nice. So now I'm at five stones to his four, uh, seven will to his four. I'm significantly ahead. Uh, play a Tama, and then uh, play a Christie. I get an Elf, and I get to kill the Lucifer. And I still have two Will up here. I'm going to go ahead and spend one of them to play another Sacred Elf. Still at two Will up, continuing to ramp ahead, um, and just passing the turn there. As you can see, like I said, this deck puts out a lot of pressure very fast and can recuperate pressure very, very quickly, especially if the ramp comes together early on. decides to pass turn again, which makes sense. His hand's kind of full of cancel spells. Um, during the upkeep, I'm going to use uh, health Christie's effect to pump herself up to 14 and attempt to swing in for 14. He's going to zero's magic light it. I have no response to that, so it's just going to get killed uh, and exiled. But I didn't really, I didn't really lose anything there um, because it's not like I wasted will after the upkeep or anything else like that. It was essentially going to be free damage, uh, and I can always find another one later. I'm going to play a death scythe and then a torrent elf to get a one-one elf token and then draw a card off torrent. So I've got a little red and, or two little reds and a uh, Prissia in my hand. Um, again, I don't want to get over invested here and I want to be able to get an elf next turn. So I need to save kind of like two cards in my hand. So I'm just going to play the one little red and then I'm going to pass. The reason why I'm not swinging with the Thomas or the elves is that it's essentially worthless and I'm not really digging down his bows because they have four counters. So he gets the sixth stone and plays Izanagi. So he gets to RFG three of my cards at this point. He hits my Torrent Elf, my little, my Red Riding Hood, and my uh, Melfi. So all of those are getting removed from the game. Uh, and he now is suddenly a 2020. Um, and if I can kill him by any means, then I get those cards back. Um, but if I don't, then I'm just kind of shortly out of luck and those cards are gone forever. So I'm gonna tap for another stone. At this point, I have seven stones, so that red riding hood in my hand it does have all of its perks. Pay two to put red riding hood out. This is mainly just a torn on feasting and torrent for the turn. Uh, torn elf's gonna come out. I get an elf token. I get to draw a card. It was the exact card I needed in the form of Leviton. Um, so I'm going to play 
of the Shifted Prisica straight from my hand, turn her into Valentina, and then play Leviton, which is excellent for me because now I can sacrifice uh, Valentina at instant speed, which is very, very helpful. So I swing in for seven with Red Riding Hood. He goes to block, uh, and then I'm going to sacrifice um, Valentina to Leviton to steal Izanagi, and then the seven damage is going to go through. Now he could still bow here, but he does open himself up to a lot more damage if he does that. Um, so it doesn't really give him much advantage. And if he kills her, he's also ramping me further ahead, even more so, which is less, which is even more dangerous for him. So drawing into turn, he hits his third bow. He's got 12 bow counters at this point. We're unfortunately reaching the point where um, the swarm is going to kind of overcome him. He's only got four spells, cards in hand. He uses a Hera to try to get one more and kill my Death Scythe. If he kills the Levitin, it doesn't really help. He's not going to draw a card. Um, he still has the four cards in his hand. Chooses to pass the turn there, even though he has the uh, Lucifer in his hand. The reason why he's not is because if he casts Lucifer, uh, he knows that I'm just going to sacrifice uh, probably the Tama. Um, and then he's just going to get killed next turn um, from taking all this damage, especially with the 2020 Izanagi on the board. So with tons of stones available, uh, I attempt to swing in with his Izanagi. He's going to attempt to bear magic it, which will remove its abilities, but in response I'm going to sacrifice it to Lave, and because the sacrifice is part of the cost, there's no way he can like do anything else to prevent me from doing it, which is nice because now I've just refilled my hand, um, which feels really good. So I'll pay one to play another Tama, get the draw card. The question for me here is do I flip now or do I f wait till next turn and flip? I have Leviton, but with those bows out, I can't possibly kill him. So he's go I'm going to play this Red Riding Hood. He's going to try to use Zero's Magic Light on it. I'll sacrifice it to Leviton, trigger and get a tapped stone. Also, uh, I'll play another little Red Riding Hood, or another Red Riding Hood, which triggers and gets me an Elf. Um, and then I'll swing in for another seven. He'll try to RFG that one. I'll sacrifice it to Leviton. I'll get another stone. String all this ramp down up to nine stones to his set seven. Again, I've stayed pretty far ahead of him in terms of ramp this whole game. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do judgment with feasting. Reason for this being, um, I want him to try to start using those bows. And now he has to, with him being tapped out, he either has to block with the Hera or use two bows to kill each one of those tokens. Um, so there's really no chance um, that he's going to be able to stop all this damage, which means I put him in a pretty bad position for next turn. So I swing in for the first five. I have one token that can't swing this turn. Uh, and I'm not going to swing in with Feasting because she'll just get killed by bows unless I bait out uh, the bow shots here. If he bows a single one of these tokens, then he knows he's dead uh, because Fi Sing can just sacrifice everything uh, to be massive. Um, he takes the first 500, swings in, takes the next 500 down to 23. Uh, swings in for another 500, takes that, goes down to 18. Attempt to swing for 900 with the Torrent Elf. Blocks it with the Hera, which makes the most sense. It's providing the most damage this turn. Um, the two Tamas are going to swing in, so that's going to put him down to 1,400. And then he's going to take another 600 from the Sacred Elf. Again, he knows he has to take it, because if he doesn't, then Feasting's just going to kill him. Um, and at that, I have to pass. So I've got him at one card in his hand. I've got a massive board of creatures. I've got Levitine. All of my elves are super gigantic. I've got a way to give myself imperishable. Um, he's 
not in a good position at this point. Especially being at only eight life. He taps for another stone, uh, plays the uh, Alice's little scout, and then plays Lucifer. I'm gonna sacrifice one of the Tamas. Doesn't really matter at this point. I'm also going to sacrifice a Tama at the end of the turn to kill his um, Alice's little scout. Gonna give Feasting some pumps before recovery. So now she's a 10-10 dealing 12 damage. All of these stones come back up. Now I have that Apollo, but there's no point in doing that because of the fact that he will just, uh, can shoot it down with just one bow then, cause she'll have flying. I will play a Sacred Elf. And I will play, pay two to play a Torrent Elf. I will get two more Elf tokens with Feasting and then I will draw a card. And just to be funny, uh, I'm, because I'm, I know that it's over this turn at this point, um, I'm going to cast um, Magic Stone Analysis because I knew I had one basic left in the deck. So I grabbed all 10 of my stones at this point. Um, now, we're he and I are going to be a little bit goofy here. Um, I'm going to swing in for the first five. He's going to take it. He's going down to three. I'm going to swing for another five. He's going to attempt to gain some life with the blocking of um, a block of Lucifer. But I'm actually going to go ahead and, um, again, being a little bit silly, I'm going to flash in the Melfi to prevent all of Lucifer's damage. So um, my elf doesn't even actually have to die there. Swing in for another five. He makes it a, a bear, a 4-4, and then he kills it with a bow. Swing in with another token. Um, he double bows it there. James's whole point here was he didn't want to get killed by a token. Uh, so I could literally swing in with any of the other elves that are here right now uh, and finish the game off, but I wanted to be silly as well. So you're going to see us go through a ridiculous counting of things, and I deal about uh, 30... 400 damage with a flying feasting because I can now fly because his bows are tapped So just to be goofy and finish the game off in a silly way um, My feasting I'm going to sacrifice every creature I have to Levitin to be recovering and tapping and recovering and tapping uh, And then feasting's going to swing in for about 3600 damage But while that's all being said and done uh, that is the match guys Hopefully you guys enjoyed it huge thanks to James for the fun list uh, to play against and to sit down and record with him um, deck profiles will be up this week as always Friday and Saturday let me know what you guys thought of the list in the comment section down below go ahead and like comment and subscribe as always and until next time this is TMO73 signing off